Achievers to this rendition of your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of July 18th. It's going to be a different episode this week because, well, first, I'm solo this week, and I wanted to just have a conversation slash discussion about the way some things are changing with Xbox. And one of the biggest things that will pro- is probably ever happen in the industry, of course, the purchase of Activision Blizzard by Xbox slash Microsoft is about to happen very very soon it in the coming weeks it will be finalized and we'll be in a post merger slash purchase world whereas we've constantly constantly been talking about the steel for quite a while now let's discuss some changes and then we can maybe speculate on certain things that will happen with game pass in general, in the short to mid to long term. Although I think in the short term, nothing really is going to change. I think mid to long term is where actual interesting discussion can happen. Because if you're talking mid to long term, it gets much more interesting to discuss because we find ourselves in the precarious position of a potential, potentially very strong Xbox. Whereas we haven't seen that in quite a while. And even when Microsoft was quite strong in the console space, it was very short-lived versus the PlayStation and Nintendo's uh, space. So it was When they're strong, they're strong for a while, and they're pretty much dominant in very, very different ways than Xbox was. But that was kind of a tangent. Let's discuss Xbox Live and how that's changing, and then that will kind of set us up for the core of our discussion today of course if you haven't been paying attention to xbox live gold which is the long-standing subscription service that you would pay to play online is changing forever to something called xbox core i believe or no sorry game pass core is that oh my god i'm already forgetting what it's called i think i'm pretty sure it's xbox game pass core is the actual way that it's called yeah xbox game pass core coming september 1st this is replacing gold as we know it right now right of course gold straight and simple you had games with gold and you had exclusive deals and you could play online that was a monthly fee you could pay and you'd get all that now of course that's changing to xbox game pass core that was announced yesterday very early in the morning and technically it went out a little earlier because i I think um there was a press release like a few hours like in the late night the previous day but let's discuss this very quickly. So Game Pass Core will have 25 titles in total that you will have access to Game Pass. So you will have a slight bit of access to Game Pass. And I believe it's almost all first party or very, very select few games from other things. So the only titles that are announced right now among us, Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Grounded, Halo 5, Guardians, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade, Sedona, Sacrifice, Human, Fall Flat, Inside, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Psychonauts, State of Decay 2, and Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel. Of course, there'll be more because that isn't it. They also said new titles will be added two to three times a year. So it's not something that's going to be constantly refreshed, but you'll be adding a couple titles here and there. Unclear if it's going to be brand new titles or if it's something like... Maybe after the after a game's been on the market for a year or two, it will be added to the service. I'm sure there'll be some first-party games that are going to be exclusive on the console version of Game Pass. Of course, the console version of Game Pass still exists. There's both the Xbox Core system, console, and PC versions. So on PC, that works exactly how you think it is. It's just Game Pass on PC. Console, same thing. It's just Game Pass on your console. And of course, Ultimate combines everything into one thing you get. Game Pass for PC, console, and cloud, and you get the you know memberships, you get the first party games day one, EA Play still is included, and you get Xbox Game Pass Core now, which used to be gold, which means you can play online. And that's important to establish that huge change right now, so we can kind of set ourselves up to have a bigger discussion later in the video. Now, discussing all of that, and really pointing out what's happening with the service we can open the door to speculating what can change about the service what is expected to change and how this is going to affect the greater market as i think everyone's noticed especially 
if you're listening every episode that my tone on game pass is going down or at least i'm getting more skeptical of the service in general as it's getting foggier and foggier when you sit down and really think about it how this works or how this will work in a thriving in quotes ecosystem right how do we get a bigger market for more games when something like game pass maybe exists that could eat away at separate purchases so for instance are we seeing the beginnings of game or developers slash publishers not being interested on launching on xbox because you might not sell anymore right that's troubling if maybe the general sale of games are being harmed and we know they are because of game pass that we might see a change to some developers just not caring about Xbox. We're seeing that maybe with Square Enix. Unclear how that works in the way of is Square just doesn't care because they want Xbox to pay for them to be there, as they kind of have before with how they got all the Final Fantasies on Xbox. I mean, do they really only care for that specific monetary exchange to be on there? Because they're not going to sell regardless. Is there something in the background with PlayStation happening that Square Enix is trying to cuddle up with them to maybe per maybe sell to them who knows but it could be beginnings of something that we might be saying we might be saying other publishers not care now of course square enix in japan very japanese studio with how they operate and of course they've only become more japanese centric as they sold off all their american studios minus a few so maybe it is, and of course, Xbox is not at all popular in Japan. It is very, very dominated by PlayStation and Nintendo. Very dominated. It's nowhere close. Uh, they they sell, I believe, in the thousands to tens of thousands. It's apparently a bloodbath over there in terms of what they can sell. It's kind of embarrassing. I wish they had a bigger push to the JRPG market. Of course, everything they just bought is very, very American and European. So it's... Not a lot of Japanese studios, so they still don't have any leverage there. And I think that's one of their biggest problems. Also, something I'm very curious why they're spending all this money on, specifically Activision Blizzard. They keep saying it's for mobile and these things, but this could have been used so much wiser. But we're going to get to that in a second. With the groundwork of what I wanted to discuss, Game Pass Core, Game Pass Ultimate, and all these things kind of out so we can all understand we're on the same page here. This kind of brought me into a specific line of thinking where, why did they have make this change? Now, <laughs> if you're asking me specifically why they made this change, in my opinion, it's kind of clear. It's so they can have, so they're able to say now that Game Pass has 60 plus million subscribers or something, whatever, whatever it's going to be now, because now everything's Game Pass. So now you can flaunt like, look how many Game Pass subscribers we have in your shareholder meetings and you sound much more impressive after the fact when you bought activision blizzard and just spent 70 billion dollars on a giant corporation it was 69 billion dollars that's not true it wasn't 70 billion i shouldn't round up there but maybe that's the reason i think that is a big reason why they did that of course another reason they probably wanted to really really shove game pass down people's Throats in quotes. Throats is a, that's a strong way of putting it, but I want it. I I firmly believe that's one of the things they want here. They want you to look at this pricing scheme. I'm imagining it in my head right now. Someone buys an Xbox over for time, plugs it in, opens up the thing, and right now it's like, what do you want to pay for? If you need to go online, there's Game Pass Core, or for six dollars more a month, technically seven, you can play for Ultimate and you get all these Game Pass games. Or they're getting you in the door with Core. They, hey, you pay your 10 bucks and just mess around with Core. And then you're like, oh, you know. And uh, see, I'm curious how they're going to deliver those 25 games on on the system. Is Because if it's still you access it via Game Pass, I'm, I'm imagining they'll have Core kind of cut out. But they'll tantalize you with and in Game Pass over here, you'll get all this stuff curious how it's going to be put because if you do it that way you're constantly tantalizing the person to sign up for ultimate to try and get everything else because of course everyone's going to want core because you need the online i mean but you could use this as a 
jump start almost to Game Pass on consoles because Phil has pretty much gone on record saying Game Pass on consoles is stagnant and they don't expect to go up anymore because they've run out of people to sell it to because Xbox is pretty much sold what they can expect and whatever small margins they'll grow, they're not interested in gaining those margins. They're, they need to sell, in my opinion, or at least with what I can see, they're not interested in trying to get more people on console because they probably hit close to the ceiling and they just need to sell more consoles to be able to get more subscribers that's why they've pivoted so much harder into pc and that's why pc's game pass uh price didn't go up because they're very 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 much trying to get people to get on pc which i heard bad things about the xbox app on pc specifically with game pass i don't remember it being a problem last time i used it but that was months ago so I'm not going to pretend like I know it isn't really great, but also I feel like they always struggle making like a really, really, really solid UI sometimes because it constantly changes and they try to make it look like windows in these things. And it just doesn't work in my opinion. Sometimes that's beside the point though. Where was I? Um, yes. Discussing, of course, why are we here today? Uh, discussing what this could mean for the greater ecosystem and, one that is, and I was curious if this changed anyone else's mind out there. If Game Pass maybe looks brighter, the future Game Pass looks brighter because we're actually seeing a couple of ref, uh, resurgences of some older games. I know I just saw a tweet that says one million people are playing Black Ops right now, the first Black Ops ever, because the servers work now. Uh, Activision Blizzard famous for as soon as a Call of Duty becomes about three to four years old, they abandon it and it becomes overtaken with cheaters or the servers just don't work. Looks like that's changing, of course, with Xbox as they slowly integrate into the ecosystem of Xbox over the course of this purchasing. They're probably opening up all these servers to get them working again, of course, to shove all these games on the Game Pass. If we remember Bethesda, I believe, after the deal was finalized, it took like two days and then all the games were on Game Pass, I believe. It was something like that. It was less than a week and all the games were right there on game pass ready to go so we could be looking at in the next month here it is all call of duties crash bandicoots all these things i mean maybe they'll piece it out so they can have like news cycles every few weeks of hey here's more activision games here's more activision games maybe they do it all at once i doubt you do i don't think you do it all at once because you'd, you'd want to piece it out so you get that news thing every week and you get that jump of subscribers every month Instead of doing it all at once and then you get that one big news story and then everyone like goes away. Who knows? I'm not really sure how they're really going to deal with this. But we are speaking a lot of specifically about Game Pass and how they're going to work in the coming days. But I wanted to really discuss the future of what Game Pass can be doing and why... I think we should be on the alert or at least be thinking of Game Pass in a different way as right now it is good in the short term for us, I think, right? We're going to get all these games for cheap. Sorry, that was literally Duolingo binging on my phone, if you guys heard that. Um, trying to learn some more Spanish. I always learned a little bit of Spanish, but I want to learn more of it. I got sidetracked. But it, we we should probably should be thinking, maybe we should be thinking of Game Pass and something else now. It is funny that we're seeing this resurgence in Game Pass, and I find it funny that we're seeing all these people get behind Game Pass so, so hardly. A lot of people that, honestly, I've lost a bit of respect for, especially over the course of this FTC hearing with Xbox and these things, of how how fervent they were backing Microsoft and Xbox with this purchase, which is very, very funny because we're dominated almost exclusively by this kind of liberal mindset in the, and you know, not to make it political, but this is a very political discussion. So hopefully I'm not offending anyone. I don't think I'm saying anything offensive here, but um, the gaming sphere is very, very, very hard liberal. Very. I mean, there's, you'll find, you'll be very hard pressed to find anyone anywhere close to what you would call a right leaning person and conservative field that doesn't hide it. Let me be clear about that. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that do not advertise it for obvious reasons. Uh, we can point to many people who have been completely cold out of the <laughs> cold out of the uh, gaming sphere, like the uh, I think it was it the CEO of 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 the 
developers behind Maneater that was that that was kicked out for saying he supported abortion. So it's it's a very hot button topic here. It's, the game industry is very very liberal, so they don't really take kindly to people who disagree with them. They very very much like to kick them out. So it's I found it very interesting that we found that no one was really being called out for vehemently backing the FTC. Uh, hearings in the pro for X Xbox and Microsoft, as that is incredibly conservative, incredibly conservative. And it's interesting that everyone just kind of sat down and, or it's not even sat down, sorry, picked up their pitchforks and were saying, oh, this is what you're doing with our tax dollars with the FTC, which by the way, I don't think people remembered that's what they did with their tax dollars because one, I saw one person tweet it out and then I saw like a wave later of people tweeting it out. I was like, Dude, I don't think a lot of these people knew that's, <laughs> that's the, that these that, that we pay for this stuff. But uh, that was very funny to see from my point of view because it's very much, I saw one person say it and then a, like a wave of other people say it. And I'm like, I don't think a lot of you knew that we even paid for that, did you? But <laughs> what, whatever. Not important, and I'm not trying to dunk on anyone specific here. That's why I don't use names with any of this. But it was something that struck a chord with me, and I'm curious if anyone at home saw or has an opinion on what I'm saying here. Maybe I'm wrong, but supporting a giant, giant, giant company, one of the biggest in the world and in a, in a, and of human history, Microsoft, buying a uh, not a competitor per se, but a part a potential big third-party partner in the entire industry of Activision Blizzard you would think there'd be more people against a deal such as that but we're finding or at least I'm finding that many of them were pro this deal through 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 and through not even close to announce having trouble finding anyone with opposition to this deal and you found me retweeting a few select people saying like making very, very, very quick and broad judgments to something that we have no idea what it looks like right now. And we are treating Xbox as if these and, and Microsoft as if as the third, this very nice company that wants to make sure gaming is for everyone in these things. And there are people that are very, very, which is funny. I'm wearing an Xbox shirt right now. I didn't even do this on purpose. This is when I used to work at GameStop. Uh, we we're given all these shirts, um. So it's funny that I'm I'm making fun of and and saying all, all these things about Game Pass. I'm literally wearing Game Pass shirt right now. Um, funny that how that works. But back to the point. I I I I, I don't like throwing the word shill around, and I won't. I don't think any of these people are shills. Um, because I think to be a show you have to at least be paid, and I don't think any of these people are paid, but. Find it interesting that a lot a lot of people were siding with Xbox and Microsoft and were just quick to be against the FTC here. I think it's very important for the FTC to try and block something like this for happening just because they can and should and should try to do anything. I think there's plenty of things that could be a problem with this FTC thing. Do I think it should go through? Yeah, probably. Uh, only because all these other things went through. And if you're trying to make a legal argument, it's hard to because a lot of other mergers went through. So it's like... How do you make the case for this one and not the other ones? I don't know that argument because I'm not a legal guy, but that's just how I saw it. Uh, I, I But I think there's way, way bigger problems in the sphere of uh, giant companies than games. I, I Not not to denigrate us, where art, art is very, very important. It's pretty much what makes us human, in my opinion, is art, culture, and these things. That's what I think that's the most identifying thing that you can call us as a human species that if if we were to show someone things it would be mostly our art and you know of course what we've done with math and science and these things but art is core to what makes us us so i think it's very important but if i'm looking at a, like things that we should stop i'm looking at pharmaceuticals i'm looking at hollywood i'm looking at much much bigger more important things and uh not to say hollywood's more important games i actually don't think that but I kind of misspoke there but uh, things like uh, Raytheon. I mean, there's way, way bigger things we could be hitting on than if this game company should buy this game company, but I'm kind of getting sidetracked again. Bringing up um everything and finding interest in this kind of... And I've, I was trying to watch it from afar because I was very, very into the kind of Twitter space 
specifically just having discussions with people and, and listening and learning. This last week, I kind of stepped back a bit and wanted to see how people react to this. And it was just a lot of, a lot of people with their own Xbox inside, which I just found interesting because, again, this is a very liberal space. And seeing people agree with a very, 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 very conservative view of we should let this, quote, like $100 billion company be able to buy. I mean, if you believe they should buy Blizzard Activision, you pretty much believe they should buy anybody. Of course, I, I know none of these people think they would do it like they should do a monopoly. I'm not saying like they agree with that, but I'm just saying that specific point that if you agree with Activision Blizzard, you would also agree them buying pretty much anyone that wouldn't encompass literally everyone at once. Just saying like you pretty much would agree like, oh, you know, then you can buy anyone. Which is like, okay, you know, you do you, you, you know, we're all different people, but that was my biggest takeaway, I think, from all this. It was interesting to see just how many people were behind this thing so vehemently. So vehemently. And uh, it got to the point where I was kind of like, hmm, we definitely have more fanboys than, than we allow ourselves in the gaming industry. I think we always think we're above it in some instances, but I think a lot of us still have that kind of primal very deep-seated tribalistic nature to us specifically when we really like or believe in something and we fully stand or there's a lot of people in very very high standing in this industry that i saw myself and i was like wow really you are saying this i feel like you should be smarter than that but and and it's crazy that i'm thinking this way you would think i would be the one being corrected here but it's not true i i see so many people saying these wild wild things and I hate that we never really see the opposite view in the mainstream kind of gaming ecosystem. I always bring up Last Stand Media with someone that is very, very good at bringing other sides of the arguments to the table. But that's one. I mean, that is just one guy out there, right? That's that's Colin Moriarty, formerly of Kind of Funny. One dude versus the entire industry, right? So it's just crazy that we're seeing... This kind that well, I, I should say we saw this giant, for lack of a better word, army on Twitter just fully backing this one deal. I don't know. It's just interesting. And I've kind of hit on everything I want to discuss on that specific nature, but I would love to hear someone's opinion on why they think this is the specific hill they wanted to die on. I think it's just easy, I guess, maybe because xbox makes the case so easily that they are not good at this or something or maybe they're not bad at it and it's crazy that microsoft was able to really really make it look like they were small and that I, that has to take a lot of money in pr or whatever they're doing out there to make them seem small and, and unefficient because they really made people forget Microsoft, the $100 billion company, can't make video games when they did it before is kind of crazy, right? They kind of made everyone believe like there was some small no-hit company that like is messing up so bad that they need to buy Activision Blizzard to get in the game again, which is not even sort of true. <laughs> and it's not, not, it's so far from the reality of what is actually true but it seemed to have worked in their favor i don't see anyone really uh against them or calling them out for that specific issue that 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 they've come up with i thought that was incredibly strange that they were able to kind of decouple themselves from microsoft and make them seem so small in like the public eye who i i'm not sufficient enough to understand the whole court aspect i didn't listen into the court or anything so i don't know what they made it look like in the court, but I feel, I just feel like they were able to make it seem like they were just this stumbling company that's starting out and they need help in these things. And, and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, they need help. Let's help them out. Like let them buy Activision Blizzard. And I'll say this again. And I said this in a previous episode, I am incredibly trepidatious that they're going to be able to manage the studios incredibly trepidatious they're struggling to make their own studios and manage them from the ground up that should be the easier way than trying to incorporate a whole different company system and trying to make it work for yourself that seems 
much harder, much harder than what they're uh, doing right now. And I would have, I've said this actually before, I would have actually preferred they don't do this. They take a third of that money and invest it into their own studios. Make make a studio that has the prestige or at least the backing of a Naughty Dog. Make it, make it so prestigious. Make a game that makes people come to you. Because that is the biggest problem with Microsoft right now. They cannot keep talent. They can't. They struggle with it. It is their Achilles heel that no one discusses. Microsoft and in turn Xbox, of course, is bleeding people. And I think it's obvious. If you just look at how a lot of their systems work in, in like the internals and you hear these stories of 343 three having contracting and all these things and not being able to keep talent with um, uh, in the initiative and struggling to make Perfect Dark and that's the whole reason they have Crystal Dynamics now. They had to pay for them to make the game and it's pretty much crystal making the game now because there's so few people there and they keep bleeding their higher talent during development which is horrible that happened all the time in 343's uh halo games so they struggle to keep anybody why is that the case why are they not the leading people with talent if you are being poached from microsoft there's a problem so I would have much preferred them just take this money and just just invest it in themselves. Uh, now I do, I don't. <laughs> how do I put this? I find it ironic that that is my solution, as it is very rare that I think more money in any scenario is almost all is almost the solution in any major company. But I would have much rather seen that and have a good standing in the world of resumes and keeping talent in these things than what we have right now which is it just seems like they're just going to bleed people over and over again and i find that the case with activision blizzard i actually said this before and it was proven from jim ryan's email in that came out in the ftc hearing through discovery that once this deals through there people as soon as that contract's over everyone's leaving so they're gonna have this giant managing body of studios and they won't be able to manage any of them because all the talent's gone right we discussed this before and it was brought to my attention funny we're bringing this man up again call him already it was brought to my attention through one of their things that they did before that why do we call bioware and these things like bioware because like everyone's gone so like it's not really bioware anymore um i wonder if that's gonna be the case with activision blizzard like if, it, if we lose all the talent is it even gonna be Raven? Is it even going to be Sledgehammer? Is it going to be Infinity War? Is it going to be X XYZ? Is it going to be any of these studios anymore when they're all gone? Who knows? You have to imagine most executives of management are going to be gone the moment those uh, contracts expire and they're going to either retire or go make a new studio by themselves. The in And this giant cash influx that this is going to do is... I'm not an econ ec economist... I'm not someone who understands these things, but I can't imagine a giant cash inflection from a giant corporation like Microsoft into the games. It was going to do something. Is it going to be good or bad? I have no idea. But the giant infusion of cash that's about to happen. Yikes, man. It is going to be crazy. I'm very curious. I will assume most of the money will just be, you know, to billionaire bill you know make more billionaires and they're just going to keep the money so like you know I, i'm not like crazy here in my summation but i don't know i, I, I i'm curious like if there's going to be some study later on like how what did this money amount of money do to like this because this is pretty much the biggest like cash pay for a studio or not studio like i guess a tank company ever i think uh because zynga was gonna be that but then this was announced like a couple days later and it completely blew Zing out of the water. Zing was like a couple billion dollars. Well, I say a couple, Jesus, as if that's not no amount of money, but, you know, in comparison to this, it's nothing. But moving on to the short to midterm to long term. Short term, I wanted to uh, f uh, bring up really quick as I really don't think this is going to change. I think, honestly, it's going to be great. 
the next three to five years is going to be probably awesome for all of us in the Xbox kind of ecosystem slash Game Pass ecosystem. That like, oh hey, uh, we have all these awesome games on Game Pass now, and we have to uh, we get to play them. Cool. This is this is cool. I like this. I, I'm enjoying my time with these games and. Although I am probably going to be right there with you, if I'm being honest, because I'm going to be enjoying Game Pass as well. I'm curious what this is going to mean later on. Will this kind of hurt competition in some way? Will it make hard? Will it make it harder for people to enter the space because they have no real market on Xbox, so they have to rely on Nintendo and Switch? That means we might only get certain types of games. I, I don't know. Those are, I think, too sophisticated questions for me to really answer. But I wanted to quickly bring up that in the short term, I, I really don't think anything is going to change other than good stuff. But in the mid to long term, I'm I'm I feel like. Excuse me. Hold on. <coughs> oh, excuse me um i feel like for the short or sorry the mid to long term is going to see quite a bit of change quite a bit of change in that game pass is i think getting another prize race in a few years i think they're really going to follow the netflix model i've said this for a while i think not i think sorry i've said this for a while that i think they saw what netflix did they they established a cable like need for this subscription service this master subscription service right because it 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 all netflix has has pretty much made it to the point where it's like cable where like for a very very they, very long time netflix themselves on, established this very cable like in in that it feels like you need to have it right it became so ubiquitous slash necessary for most people that just like cable, some people ha have troubles like cutting the cable cord, right? And saving the money from cable that they never cancel it, right? Even when subscription service was on the rise and it became easier and easier to buy your content a la carte that they just kept cable forever. And a lot of people still do that. Netflix, I think, followed that model. They started super cheap. They made it incredibly cheap. I think it was 10 bucks when it started. I don't remember, but it was cheap, you know, easy money every month. Boom, boom, boom. And at, over the course of, of the time that Netflix has been out and they've never like made a profit, if I remember right, or at least they still haven't or they just made profit, something like that. They're, they were always a red company. They, they were almost rarely in the black, but because as, every time they made money, they just spent it trying to make them to put in words like kind of like a monopoly, sort of. Not really, but kind of. Anyways, we're seeing... I, th I really do think Xbox saw that scheme and their, I guess, pricing scheme, whatever you want to call it, and we're like, we want to do that. We're going to make it super cheap. We're going to keep it cheap as long as we can. We'll bleed the money when we have to, and that, trust me, they will, are bleeding money to run Game Pass. I refuse to believe otherwise, it's just impossible. It's it's not because just these deals are too expensive for them not to be. But they're they're bleeding the cash to be able to make Game Pass as must buy as possible, right? Then they slowly raise the price after having big big reasons for you to keep there and feel like you need to be there, right? What happens in ten years when you have it bought in one of the a major game, and you're on Game Pass, right? You kind of feel like you have to have it. Right, if you haven't bought Halo Infinite, Starfield, um, let's say um, uh, any Bethesda games, let's say Indiana Jones, let's say uh, the new Wolfenstein or something, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say you haven't bought a game in like ten years from Xbox First Party, and you go to cancel it, and there's a little pop up that says, "Hey, you know, you haven't bought X Y Z games. If you you know unsubscribe, you won't be able to access them." That kind of makes you feel like you're a little trapped, right? Similar, almost similar to the in the vein that like, since PlayStation won the very very important generation to win, which Phil Spencer himself said, that they have this giant library that makes you compelled to stay there because you have this money invested, so you will never leave it, right? I couldn't imagine if I had to leave Xbox for any reason, right? You know how many games I would lose, right? So it becomes this mentality of i have to stay because it's digital so i don't own any of this so i can't play it on something else so it's kind of like i gotta hope that i hitched the wagon on the right horse and game pass is kind of that except a little more simplified in the point where 
you're paying for the subscription service. You don't technically own anything. So if you take away the subscription service, now you're looking at like, oh, wait, well, no, I want, you know, I might want to play XYZ game again. So I have to buy it. And it becomes this huge mess that incentivizes you to never leave it. Fast forward to five to ten years when they have you kind of by the balls and you are uh, and they slowly rise prices to Netflix like things. I really do feel like the end game is get Game Pass to around 15 bucks, have ultimate be 20 a month, 21 a month, something like that. And that'll be giant money raking money, giant just swaths, swaths of money that they'll be incorporating in and. That's, I think, the main driver of their Activision Blizzard deal. Incorporate all these must-play games into Game Pass for console and PC. Incentivize people to pay for it. Get uh, that PC market away from Steam and these things. Try to get it integrated into the Xbox marketplace. Don't know why they are so bad at making apps for the Windows when it's it's with the people who made Windows. I don't understand it, but fix the app make it more enjoyable see if you can scrape some of that steam monopoly onto your platform maybe have people pay for that membership have them not buy games for 10 years and then boom you're stuck right yeah you're, you're kind of down the barrel of oh no if i unsubscribe i lose my library metaphorically and i have to like rebuy these games that i'd, I'd want to play one day these are all very 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 simple pretty much arguments i'm not saying anything revolutionary what i'm saying but i'm just pointing out that in the mid to long term we could be looking at netflix pretty much and people are turning on netflix let's look at sag after uh i think i'm pronouncing that right sag and the wga i'm i'm pretty sure i'm saying all that right with the the writers guild and the acting strike where they're demanding new contracts and they're not getting paid the way they want to because residuals don't work the same because they're not being streamed the same way. So like they're not making the same amount of money that they used to be, I believe because you, and this was, I believe Matt Damon like got a viral video once that he explained pretty much like why the movie industry is not making a lot of money anymore, or at least as much or people aren't making, I don't know who's, I don't remember who specifically, but he's saying like, you know, we used to make our money off DVD sales and like, you know, we would have, you would make money on opening day. You'd make your pockets office money. You'd make your residuals off that. Then you would make money again off your DVD sales. And that could change the directory because sometimes you would be a huge DVD maker. But, you know, you maybe you didn't have a big box office. So you kind of almost had a second chance or you had a second earnings that could have justified the making of a movie. But now you sell on, now you go to the movies make your money there then you go to a streaming service and it's more gray area how you actually make your money there right um i actually this morning another person i'll bring up um in the different industry we're seeing two industries by the way come out against this kind of scheme here by the way uh snoop dogg himself came out and let's be clear with both these people they've made millions hundreds of millions of dollars they don't even need to say any of this because they've made their money. They don't care. So I think that's what gives this specific instance so much validity because they're being able to come out and say, hey, I'm already rich and I have these thoughts about these things, right? So they, they don't have a... They, they, who, who can, they probably can never make another movie slash music and they'll be fine, right? So Snoop Dogg comes out and says... In a very Snoop Dogg way, I loved it. I love the video because I was like, I love Snoop Dogg. <laughs> like, just the way he talks is awesome. Um... It came out as like how people are mad and rappers are getting upset because like stream doesn't equal money. He said it back in the you know when he was doing it. Of course, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this remember, right? You you come out, you make a album, you sell it, you make the money, right? You buy the album, you get your cut. The the record company gets the cut. You're done, right? You make money. Now it's you release it, you make some money on the albums, and you stream it. But then how where's the money from streaming going? How much is it making? It's always unclear how that works, right? So like and he made this really good argument of like I uh, if h- how can I stream a billion times but not make a million dollars? You know? And I was like that's an interesting way of kind of in, in a very lamest terms for me to understand, right? You you got a billion streams. How are you not making money off that? 
And we saw something in, in the Spotify era, and all these industries aren't the same, but Taylor Swift was always super against them. She was, again, already rich. She was never on any of these streaming services. She eventually, of course, caved and got on all of them. But she's a good example of never respecting the service because it was not paying correctly to like the people, the small people. It wasn't even for her. It was just for the small people. They were like, yeah, I know I have friends that stream and they get no money from this. find that to that that could be the case what we could be looking at here right how do all these people get paid how does every single person in activision plus get paid right is that sticking with pc slash playstation sometimes and making a lot of money there then making your money off the game pass subscribe subscription revenue and then going out into the basket of games I don't know. This is when it gets really complicated. I'm, I should make a video solely on the economics of Game Pass and see if I can get someone to help me think about this, really examine how it would work. Because it's hard to really speculate how that would work, right? Because you have this giant pool of money. How do you know who gets what? Do you, does it, is it off plays? Is it off hours? How, how, does, how does the State of Decay team stay, stay and float? And how does initiative stay? Like, are those equal? Do you get paid based off importance? Or do you just get revenue cuts? Or do you just get, hey, this month you came out and we saw this raise, so you get that much? It's so complicated, and I would love to know, and we most likely never will until there's some sort of whistleblow or something. Not Whistleblower is not what I mean. I, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we get a document mess or you know something like that we only we saw a few things where like they had to you know they paid like a hundred million dollars to like get certain people on there we've seen little things like when uh people can fly released outriders they were like we don't think it made money because we haven't gotten any money from square so we assume it hasn't uh and that was on game pass day one so that maybe that wasn't even enough money to recoup the production cost of that game so maybe not no one saw it in the back end it gets very complicated and it's it gets so overwhelming once you really like try and digest everything you have to like speculate like all right who's making money how do they make money is it enough for everyone because now versus 30 something studios we now are uh, we uh, xbox is about to get another 20 something like that every activision blizzard studio that's just off the top of my head I, I think it's like if you include mobile it's something like that maybe a little less <clears throat> but it's a lot of studios. So we're adding on more bulk. I know they said they're like, oh, it's separate because it's still Activision Blizzard, but like, you, someone's still got to run it. So who's running it? I don't know. We'll see. I love that uh, uh, we see some people being like, oh, never mind, I'm not going to get in that. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so much for sticking with me this week. This was fun to discuss as Game Pass becomes more and more a part of the identity of Xbox. I feel like we should have had we should have a huge discussion about it. And I would love to really sit down and talk about the Game Pass economics one day with somebody who is much smarter than I. But until then, thank you so much for listening. I'm going to close out with what have you been playing uh, instead of opening with it because I really just wanted to get into it this week. I kind of felt like i missed just doing full discussions instead of just hey here's the news for the week so i wanted to do that um but until further ado remember what have you been playing of course is a question for you at home i ask you one question every week and of course i'm going to be telling you what i have been playing but audience achievers what have you been playing now of course this could be a game tv show a movie video game this is what's cute and what uh, and what have you been playing all in one final fantasy 16 is my answer i'm slowly going through this game i'm, I'm in no rush if i'm being honest um i don't want to spoil it so i'm not going to tell you where i am i'm not going to really give you any hints because i don't think i can even hint at where i am i want to say i'm halfway through but i don't know i'm enjoying the game i will say there is a lot of problems with it but it is very good. Um, I'll name off 
because I feel like there has actually been a giant influx of people loving this game. So I'll be the one person saying a couple things that I think are wrong with the game. Because I feel like you can listen to really anybody on Twitter or any podcast you listen to. You're going to hear the good stuff. And I rarely hear people talking about the bad stuff. So I'll quickly name a few bad stuff. So maybe you can get a better vision of the game if you're still on the fence or just want to hear the conversation. But I hate the items in the world. So if you're new to the game or haven't played it yet, you can pick up items that are like glittering on the ground. Uh, they're always terrible. Why are they always so bad? Sometimes I'm picking up five gill. Like, what is this? Why is this here? It's just, it just feels worthless, so I don't even pick them up anymore. Why are they in the game? Uh, about a third of the side quests are actually good. The rest of the two thirds are hor horrifically bad. And I'm talking bad. I'm saying this random person says, oh my god, I need my spoopin' spoppin'. I dropped it next to a chocobo. 50 kilometers each. And he's, and your character goes, oh, okay, I'll help you. And then he runs off, gets the gloopin' spoppin' next to the chocobo. You fight some guy to get it. Then you run back, you get 10 gil. You get a couple other things in, that, uh, in, the, in, the, in the game, and, and then you, and you walk away terrible that is like two-thirds of them one third of them are very good there's a lot of them i've done where i'm like this is very good i like the story here i like the little side quest lore of the game you know going on here there's a couple things i upgrade you to that makes it feel rewarding so i enjoy them a lot those specifically but that's only about a third of them and you can tell which ones were created with the game in mind and you can tell the other ones where it's like we gotta bloat the time in this section a little bit so add them and and that'll kind of like bloat the time will the game will be longer that we can kind of slow the player down a bit so we can really make sure like we're getting a big playtime hour completion i don't know why developers care about that i don't but hey you know more power to you for some reason everyone wants that cool whatever also, same thing with main quests. Sometimes after main quests, you'll you'll be like, hey, talk to this person. Now, go talk to this person, and they're on the other side of this area. Now, get this. Go back to the other person. Talk to them. Now, talk to these three people in the area to tell them about a recent event. Okay, why am I a newsletter? I don't understand. Why am I this news guy walking around? telling people different news i thought i was important can't we delegate this task to somebody again another another slow in the player down let's get this play count a little higher let's get this will add 30 minutes here this will add 40 minutes there this will add 25 minutes here oh hey i need help making a spooping bopping go get this piece of equipment and it's over there. You go you kill this thing. You get this piece of equipment. You come back to slowly get forward with main quest. There's, there are things wrong with the game. I feel a lot of people are crazy about the game. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. But there is quite a bit of things that I'm like, why is it here? This would be an incredible game if none of this was here. And again, I love the Lord. There are times where they literally sit you down and it's like, this is what's happening. That is cool. I love that. It's very, very, uh, you'll hear me say this a lot, Game of Thrones, where it's like, well, while you were doing this, this guy, you know, walked a couple of this and while this dude was busy, attacked him. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. That's interesting. It feels like the world is happening while you're doing things. That That is awesome. But what's not awesome is when Kendra needs her spippin from north in the north and you get the spippin and you come back and you get 10 gil and this piece of meteorite that's not fun that's not fun but game's very good i'll be keep, i'll continue playing Ooh, had to get that out what have you been playing i hope you comment below, tweet at me. You know the regular avenues of communication with me. Until the next time, that's going to be it for this episode. So I hope everyone is well out there. I hope this found everyone in good, good heart, good, a good place, I should say. But in, until then, I'm, I'm your host, Elijah. I'll see you next time. Go Chief.